All right, behind me are the recently scorched, but still very beautiful California mountains. So that must mean I'm here to review a car. But, uh, where is it? Oh, wait, it's down here. This is the Vanderhall Venice Speedster. Because 
They are so front heavy and everything's happening in the front. If you slam on the brakes mid corner, they can loop out. You're never gonna flip it over because it's so low to the ground and so light, but it couldn't loop out on you. Gorgeous. I love the way it looks, but 
I'm not sure if you can hear the camera, but it is kind of squeaking and rattling over bumps and that turbo four banger at low RPMs kind of produces sort of harmonics that make it kind of shake and vibrate. That doesn't feel as premium as the rest of this car really does because this thing does feel like a premium item except for when it squeaks and rattles. Uh, beyond that, my only real gripe with uh, the Venice Speedster uh, is just a general Vanderhall thing. So it's a really niche enthusiast specialty vehicle and I love it. But So it makes me kind of confused as to why they went with an automatic transmission. I know it's probably easier in terms of buying the package, making it work in the, in the Venice platform. But it seems like with a vehicle that's this engaging to drive, you'd almost want a manual transmission here instead. That's part of why I say the bump shifter option really is a requirement in my opinion, just because it does add that level of engagement to the Venice Speedster. Beyond that, it's happy days here. I've been driving the crap out of this car. Temp gauge is fine. Engine's great. And because it has a relatively small engine and it doesn't weigh very much, I haven't used much fuel either. Can't beat that.